water cycle crosses all sorts of boundaries, national borders, industrial sectors, from air to water to soil, and intuition tells us that we need a coordinated response. I recently had the pleasure of speaking with two people with unique insights on the subject of how collaboration can drive sustainable systems change to address pharmaceuticals in the environment. Chris Thomas, wonderful to have you with us. To get us started, I'm going to ask you for a little bit about yourself. So who are you, what do you do for work and what do you do for fun? Chris, over to you. Hi Joe, thank you for having me. I, I'm, I'm Chris Pratt and I'm a Group Managing Director for Burson Sustainability and Social Impact team. Um, so we do a lot of program building and, and engagement activity for clients looking to drive sustainability um, in their organisations and, and in the societies in which they're based. Um, and for fun, I, I love the outdoors, I love camping and cycling, and I'm loving introducing my three-year-old son to those at the moment. Fantastic. And Thomas, the, the beard says engineer, but Tell us a bit about you as well. Well, uh, Thomas, uh, I'm the director of the Swedish Water House at Stockholm International Water Institute. And um, uh, what we do is that we work with uh, uh, knowledge uh, sharing and, and convening uh, stakeholders to work together between um, science policy and, and practitioners. Um, personally, I uh, enjoy uh, bringing my kids also to the nature, but I, uh, I do love to bring them to a Food Fighters concert as well as making a uh, fermented cabbage at home. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Okay, so we've got two people who are very outdoors into the environment, also bringing on the next generation to appreciate the same things as you do. So I can see how you've both gravitated towards the field of, of pollution mitigation and caring for the wider environment. Thomas, question for you then. So can you summarise the challenge that we're facing and what the, the latest findings are on pollution with pharmaceuticals in the environment in the, in the EU? I would say that one of the most pressing issues uh, on biodiversity and human health is wastewater related to, to related to the climate change in terms of heavy rainfalls, flooding and drought, uh, because uh, wastewater and, and uh, stormwater entering our, our environment badly or completely untreated uh, is, is far, fairly or very badly jeopardizing nature and public health, um, even to the exchange where where fish uh, in in uh, aquatics uh, is is not is changing gender from female to male and the reproduction will be affected treatment of the wastewater and treatment of stormwater and plants and and also uh, helpful supportive regulating the regulatory frameworks is what we need and 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 the last five years i would say that uh, the european institutions have have proactively uh, updated the european water aquis to align with the new challenges and and what we're facing uh, then, and the, in, in initiatives like the Resilience Water Initiative, there's a, a call for a new common water strategy, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, among the European socio-economic economic actors, and, and and also securing that water is of the right quality at, at the right time. Yeah, right quality, right time, and, and in the right place. But the things that you've talked about are a whole system, so physical systems that involve infrastructure, regulatory systems that involve policy, and in the EU, a range yes. of, of interlinked policies, which mm. brings me nicely into to Chris's area of expertise. So, Chris, um, you talked about systems change and managing systems change. What does that actually mean? What Can you give us an example of a systems change approach that would relate to this particular issue that Thomas has just outlined? Yes, um, thank you. I think so often in sustainability, uh, we're dealing with and trying to address problems in our societies and economies that are part of a wider ecosystem um, that have a relationship and inter interrelationship with so many other different systems. So uh, the interrelationship between our food system and our energy system or our water system. Um, <clears throat> And to take a systems-wide approach is to is to not focus on any of the individual parts of that system necessarily, but to recognise the interconnectedness and to recognise that um, none of those parts are um, static and constant, but are actually dynamic and fluid and changing regularly. I suppose from my own experience, I, I worked for 10 years in, in energy policy and, and our energy system is, particularly in Europe, fairly well advanced in terms of the transition to renewables. But that hasn't happened by accident. Um, and that system has changed because a number of different levers have been pulled. Um, and and whether that is through regulatory intervention and you know um, governments creating incentives for that market, or whether that is through um, 
agreements between organizations to create the skills transformation needed in the economy to support that 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 transformation why do you think a system change approach would be beneficial in the water sector and how could it something like a cross industry collaboration complement these kinds of changes that you talked about well i i think the starting point is that water is itself a system right it is um, by its nature covers so many different aspects of our uh, our economy and our societies <clears throat> and there are so many different actors whether that is water users whether that is um <clears throat> businesses within the water system, water treatment, um, uh, and water uh, people and organizations that, that put pollutants into water. Um, there are so many different actors, so many different parts of the system that need to work together in order to, to, to address that challenge. I think the risk is if we don't look at this challenge through a systemic lens, then we run the risk of too narrowly focusing regulatory intervention or any of the other lead levers that we need to pull. And for example, only focusing on one particular pollutant. So while we're on the subject of, of different stakeholders, different players and, and different um, levers, if I can use Chris's words, that, that all need to be pulled in order to make system change happen. For those watching, there is an on-screen poll that's now being launched in the chat box. And what we would like you to do is, not right now, but listen to the, the next part of this particular segment and then click on the answers that you think are the closest to your own opinion. And if there's nothing there that really represents what you think, then feel free to just type it into the chat box um, and we'll get a bit of a, a debate going there. Okay, so while that's happening, back to Thomas. The next question that I have for you is, are there specific issues that you think are across industry or even across sector collaboration would help to resolve? So uh, I say that the private sector is, is one of the keys to unlock uh, the, the rapid movement and transformation we need, um, not least since every industry uh, use and influence water throughout their, their value chain. So cross-sector dialogue, cooperation is crucial for any industry and for the science to get the information and facts and for policymakers to make the right decisions that can create incentives and, and frameworks and regulatory uh, directions uh, that also the industries can follow and develop on. So I, I think collaboration, um, all hands on deck, uh, is, is the only path forward. What would you say are the biggest, learn, biggest lessons learned from your perspective that we could bring into water and the adjacent industries for taking care of these kinds of big, complex, wicked pollution issues that we face? Yeah, and I, I think there are a number, and I can't be exhaustive here, obviously, but I think um, it might seem straightforward to say, but simply having a shared understanding of the, the 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 challenge and what needs to be achieved by when is is fundamental. So having those um, sector level targets that everybody is channeled towards and focused on, even though that they may appear way off in the distance, are still vital so that there is that shared understanding of the the, 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 the same journey that we're all traveling on. Mm -hmm. I think as well, and working with private sector, as Thomas said, is, is, is so important. Private sector needs that certainty from government and policymakers. They need that that longer term perspective in terms of how this transition is going to happen and what part they have to play. But they also have a really crucial role in terms of bringing finance, scaling solutions, um, and taking part in the policy making process in such a way that can make that policy more effective. So we're, we're looking for roles and responsibilities, I guess, who's going to do what and when so that we've got the actionable steps now that take us to a, a stretching but achievable goal further on in the future. Mm. Amazing. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, oh, we're not going to stop using water in all of the sectors that, that Thomas described. It's the most incredible reagent. It's a dipolar solvent. It's all around us. It's endlessly recyclable. It's absolutely fine to use water. We just can't waste water. Um, Chris, Thomas, thank you both very, very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And now over to the audience. We want to hear from you. Please have a look at the on-screen poll where you can provide your reflections and thoughts on how a multi-actor coalition might drive systems change in the water sector in its adjacency to the pharmaceutical sector. Chris, Thomas, thanks again. Thank, Thank you, Joe. For... Thank you, Joe. When Chris says it, it's obvious we need an ambitious but realistic end goal and to work towards it with a step-by-step -step plan of actions where it's clear who should take which action and when. Often easier said than done, so we're keen to see what you think in our poll. 
What action area should a collaboration seeking to address water pollution prioritise in order to achieve sustainable systems change? Thomas's point about wastewater treatment, about stopping the future influx of pharmaceuticals into receiving waters, is a critical one.